you know, hadn't played in a week. I don't know if that's good or bad, to be honest with you. The players would always rather play games than practice. So may have had too much time, but, uh, you know, great challenge ahead of us. Obviously Carolina's undefeated, uh, playing extremely well. Uh, their transition game is really, really good. They run the floor hard. Uh, also do a good job of getting to the rim and getting to the offensive boards. So we're going to have to try to slow all that down. Uh, we haven't been playing defense uh, really to the level that we would like to be. Um, I thought we played really well uh, at the, in the Bahamas, those two games. And at Indiana, we showed some defensive toughness. We showed some focus, some urgency. I uh, hadn't seen that enough in the last few games. So uh, we're going to have to try to get that back. Uh, and we're going to play really well uh, to, to be successful. All right. Well, um, if you can make sure to use the raise hand function, everybody. Um, so we'll move forward, starting with Alec. You can go ahead whenever you're ready. Yeah, Wes, you kind of touched on it there a little bit, but obviously Carolina off to the good start. When, when you look at them on film, what kind of jumps out about why they've been able to get off the way they have? Well, like I said, transition offense, first thing, I mean, they run the floor hard. And, uh, you know, we let – last year we let uh, – let's be, I don't know how you pronounce it, but we let her just – I mean, just outrun us down the floor for layups. Uh, we got to try to take that away. But they all run hard. They all push it. So it's a big challenge trying to slow them down some because uh, that's that's really where they're really good. And then, like I said, they're athletic, so they get to the rim, they get to the offensive boards. Uh, so you got to try to contain and slow that down and, and put a body on people and box out. So um, it's, uh, again, a team that plays very, very fast and very hard. And uh, so we got to match that intensity. James, go ahead. Yeah, Wes, can you just discuss a little bit the uh, season Raina is having for you guys right now? Yeah, just, uh, you know, she's unbelievable. I mean, we're so fortunate, uh, you know, the way things worked out to get her here at NC State a couple of years ago and then to get the extra year due to the COVID. Uh, so she's been uh, phenomenal. You know, she's she really learned how to adjust her game some. Uh, obviously, before she came here, she was averaging about 20 a game. And uh, she's still very capable of doing that on any given night. But she also uh, is very good about sharing the ball and distributing it. So uh, just a winner, you know, love everything about her. And uh, like I said, wish, wish we'd had her for four years instead of two. And just a follow-up, you've mentioned uh, the additional depth you've got with this team. Has that been one of the, the tougher challenges for you as a coach, you know, dealing with the depth and, and rotations and stuff? Yeah, at times it is. And, uh, you know, I've never really had this much depth. And so – Trying to juggle it all uh, is something probably still working on. Um, so just have to continue and, and try to come up with a core group that we're going to lean on and know that we also have some really good young players that uh, are capable of, of stepping in when we need them. Thanks, Wes. Mm -hmm. Mitchell, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, yeah, you mentioned you, know, you guys haven't played in a week. Um, Kayla Jones didn't play in your last game. Is she going to be a go for this one? Yeah, she should be. Uh, she's been able to practice. Uh, like I said, probably, uh, you know, maybe uh, too much practice. Who knows? But uh, we got to monitor that. I've got to do a good job of pacing her and trying to squeeze as much out as we can. Uh, but I, you know, think it's going to be a problem all year for her still dealing, uh, using a lot of these surgeries take really a full year to, to recover. So, uh, she's, she's not there yet, but she's such a smart player, such a high basketball IQ for us that, uh, it's hard to get her off the floor sometimes. Peter, go ahead. You know, Wes, um, when you talk about your depth and, and you know, you've got some uh, good people coming in, filling in those gaps. Is there like an X factor, a couple of players that you see that have really stepped up so far and anybody that you expect that you can name specifically, um, you know, as part of that learning process to come off the bench, but, you know, do the hard work for the short period of time and come out and still keep the team's focus going forward? Well, again, I think, uh, you know, Diamond, 
Diamond's been very good about handling uh, coming in off the bench. I mean, she definitely is a great player. And and so I like to say we have six starters in that respect. But, uh, um, you know, I think she gives us a jolt of energy when she comes in. And and uh, so I love having that uh, kind of ace in the hole, so to speak. Uh, you know, Jada Boyd, somebody that uh, is also a great player and, uh, that we need, uh, you know, especially with KJ's situation, we need Jada Boyd to be uh, a big factor for us as well. And and then, like I said, the young players, uh, you know, Madison Hayes, uh, Zia James, Jessica Timmons, you know, those kids are uh, also, uh, you know, providing us depth if we need it. So uh, it's good, good to have that that kind of depth available and. Just got to, again, sometimes, like the other night at Clemson, I'll be honest with you, we had all three of our assistant coaches were out uh, with, uh, you know, protocol, whatever. And uh, I just kind of hate to say it, we had a lead and stuff. I kind of forgot about Elisa over there. And uh, she ended up only playing like 14 minutes. So, you know, I apologize to her. I didn't even realize it till a day or two later. I happened to be looking at some stats. So, uh, sometimes it's just another thing that you got to have on your mind as a head coach is uh, trying to make sure that you're you're getting some of those players some minutes. But um, again, hopefully having our staff fully back will help too. Quick follow up, yeah, with the younger players. I mean, it is a process that you have to go through as a coach to keep them motivated, and you know they're learning not only the game, the system, you know, the team, but also about winning and success and patience do you, do you find that's been more of a challenge or uh it's just another thing that you need to do a little bit more than maybe in the past no I think they're, they've been great about it uh they realize I mean y'all we're getting ready to graduate four starters I mean so uh your freshman year I think Kayla Jones maybe played averaged about three minutes a game her freshman year if that uh you just got to bide your time but you know I'm excited about those freshmen and I think they're going to be great players for us. But again, it's uh, you got a team that you know was a number one seed a year ago, won the ACC tournament, and they and, and they're all back. So uh, you you can't ignore that either. So just uh, like I said, game to game, see how things are going, and see what you need at the moment. Thank you, mm -hmm. JB. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, we appreciate you taking out the time. Um, we, we asked this question to Coach Banghart yesterday, and I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on it as well as far as just kind of having this type of competition and, you know, these type of games, you know, in the triangle with, uh, you know, all three of our teams ranked and, you know, you guys kind of being the standard because, you know, you've won the ACC championship and, you know, made it far in the um, tournament, you know, these past couple of years. So, uh, just do, what's it like for this type of atmosphere this time of year and having games like this against North Carolina on Thursday? Yeah, you know, uh, I think it's great for, for our sport. I think it's great for our players to have that kind of atmosphere. You know, this game's a sellout, and uh, it's going to be a lot of energy in the building, and, and that's fun. That's what the players want. They want to play in front of crowds, and they want to play in the big games, and that's why our non-conference schedule – very, very competitive. Uh, we've played a lot of big games. Uh, so, you know, again, hopefully we're prepared for that. But, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it comes down. The crowd's great, this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, you got to go out there and perform. And like I said, we're going to have to defend better than we've been defending and uh, then hope that offensively we're knocking down some shots. But, uh, you know, I think it's awesome to, to have that atmosphere. And you're right, it's a tough neighborhood. You know, Carolina and Duke both have uh, done a really good job of replenishing their uh, rosters, whether it's through the recruiting or through the uh, transfer portal or whatever. So, uh, you know, now I'd say we may be in about the toughest group in the conference uh, with uh, the people that we have. So uh, it's going to be a big challenge every night out. That's what I'm saying. This league is really, really good this year whether it be because of the super seniors that got the extra year or whether it be through the portal, uh, whatever, it is unbelievably strong. And, and like I said, I think everybody's, everybody's going to go through that. It's going to be a challenge. There's going to be ups and downs, but it's going to make us stronger at the end. 
Appreciate you, Coach. RL, go ahead. Hey, good morning. Uh, obviously, you you all split. Uh, you split your games with Carolina last year, the home team winning both games. Other than the fact that the losing team didn't shoot well, what were the main differences between those two games? Because they, they seem to be really contrasting. Yeah, I think you hit it. I mean, people sometimes forget about the shooting aspect of it. Uh, you know, Carolina at their place shot the heck out of it. Uh, I don't know how many uh, – Again, I somebody may need to help me. Els, Elsby, uh, you know, last year uh, she came into that game. I don't know. She maybe hit a, you know, one or two threes. wasn't shooting it great. She went four for four against us. You know, you just can't plan for that. Uh, and we didn't shoot the ball well over there at all. Uh, we had a lot of people struggle. And again, give them credit; they defended, and we just didn't handle it well. And then we came over here and we shot the ball better. And uh, so I think it is a big factor. Now, again, you have an opportunity to guard people. And so you have to make sure you're doing all you can there. But part of it is some days, that's why you play the games. Otherwise, you can just throw the stats out there and say, okay, you win. Uh, you got to go out there and actually get it done. And, uh, you know, again, they're a good team. Everybody, oh, you split the last three years. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, they're, they're pretty good. You know, uh, they give scholarships over there, too, you know. So uh, we realize it's, you know, they're undefeated. I mean, heck, so it's going to be a big challenge. We understand that. And and like I said, we're going to have to hit some shots. I think it is a, a big factor. Thank you. Uh-huh.